Hello team, you ready for some concentration videos? I find that this is a, a little bit of a challenging topic for um, newer students, but once you get the gist of how to use concentrations, it's not too bad. Remember, it's just one more step in your dimensional analysis chain. Kind of each chapter we do now, each topic, it's just one more link in this chain of conversion factors we're doing. And, and, and when you know how to apply it, no big deal. So let's start with the the uh, the top of the heap here. Uh, most common concentration unit used in academia by far that I've seen, uh, at least in general chemistry, is molarity. Most people just automatically go to that. But when I worked in industry, I never used molarity. <laughs> I used very different units. It depends where you go. If you're working um, the medical field, you might use some kind of more unique units for specific, specific types of things, things that I won't even be mentioning here. But molarity, by far, the most common one you're going to be using in this class in any general chemistry uh, type of class you'll run into or introductory chemistry. So by, and remember, concentration is just amount of solute over amount of solution. And what those units are gives you the name of this particular uh, concentration. So molarity, of course, moles. So we have moles. So the amount of solutes in moles, which you can pretty much use off God's number, you could literally calculate the number of solute particles floating around in the water if it's an aqueous solution. And we'll do that divided by the volume of the solution. So part over whole. That's really all it is, right? The part is the solute. The whole is the solution. The solution is the solute and the solvent. But we have no information on the solvent in here because we don't care how much solvent there is. We're interested in the reacting species, the solute. And once we have, now remember, when we're doing stoichiometry, whatever information you're provided, get to moles. And once you're in moles, then you can connect and jump in the balanced chemical equation from any species to any other species. So we're going to use molarity to take volume of solution information. We weigh out 32.5 milliliters of our solution. And if we know the molarity, we can use the molarity to convert the volume of the solution into moles of solute. And we're right back to where we were doing regular stoichiometry problems. Not, not a bad deal, right? Not too tough. Now, the only issue is we almost always measure volumes in milliliters in lab. I'm not gonna, we're not going to do things in liter quantities. Imagine the waste disposal fees of that. Right? <laughs> so typically, we're going to be using milliliters, but the units is liters. It's moles of solute per liters of solution. So one of the biggest things you're going to be doing is taking milliliters of solution, converting it to liters of solution, and then applying the molarity. Now, there's some shortcuts to that, but we're not going to worry about that right now. That is given the symbol capital M. Um, I think a lot of people use capital C uh, for that, um, but a lot of people confuse capital C for concentration for anything, kind of a generic one, but I've seen a lot of people use capital C uh, interchangeably with capital M. We're going to stick with capital M for molarity, just a little more intuitively obvious, I think. So what we're going to do, we're going to look at uh, several different factors um, and uses for molarity. All right, first and foremost, we're going to look at molarity as a conversion factor. All right. For stoichiometry or unit line equations. And we said that in the last, the last video. That's the prime reason we're going to be using that. And then secondly, we're going to be looking at molarity uh, especially when we do the next chapter, when we look at how species exist in solution, like sodium chloride doesn't exist as NaCl, it exists as separated sodium cations and chloride anions. We're going to be looking at individual ions. Mm. That's something we're looking to do. Not as big a deal at this point for us, but when we get to what are called net ion equations later on down the road, or if you're in uh, medicine, um, you're going to be looking at specific, like what's the concentration of just the chloride ions in this, because they're not interested in anything else. So it's a, it's a simple little conversion for us to do. And then last but not least, and I'll probably do it in a separate video, is um, making solutions. Or preparing solutions.
So I'll be, uh, again, doing a separate video mostly for lab on preparing solutions. But we'll talk about how to calculate if I want to make a solution, how much solute do I need to do that. So we'll bang through these. Let's start with the one you're going to use the most. How do we use it as a conversion factor? So I'll stick a problem. I'll just put that problem we had in the last video with the copper solid and the silver nitrate solution and show you how we attack it and extract solute information from the concentration and the solution volume. Here is a very, very common question you're going to be running into on homeworks, quizzes, and maybe exams. Oh. And I could, I could throw you an infinite number of these, but they're all kind of the same. It just will be different chemical reactions. And at this point, I'll be providing you the reactants and products. Um, but in the next chapter, when we do reactions and aqueous solution, we're going to learn how to predict those products. Oh, yay! I know you're so excited. You can't wait. You're going to just burn through all these videos as fast as you can. Get four chapters ahead. <laughs> right. So here we go. So we've got that reaction we had before. Solid copper plus the silver nitrate solution forming copper 2 nitrate solution and solid silver. Hey, silver going about, it popped over $17 an ounce, right? So let's make some solid silver and, and we could we could actually calculate how much that would be worth if we wanted to, if we knowing the price of silver per uh, ounce. Of course, we'll be probably solving in grams. So what mass of solid silver, and again, a generic one, so we could do grams, we could do milligrams, we could do kilograms, pounds, ounces, whatever units we want of mass. It was not specified in the problem, but usually grams. What mass of solid silver can form when 32.4 milliliters, right, of a 0.2418 molar solution of silver nitrate reacts. Now the assumption in here, since we weren't getting any information on the copper solid, we're assuming the copper solid is in excess or the exact stoichiometric amount, and the silver nitrate solution is the limiting reactant. You have to make that assumption if no information is given on the other, other reactant. So the con I never start with the concentration. The concentration is a conversion factor we apply as a tool to convert one unit to another, solution to solvent, I mean solute. So we're going to start with the volume of the solution, the 32.4 milliliters. And then we will apply, like a hammer to a nail, apply the concentration to that to convert the solution volume into the solute amount. And you'll see that work out in the unit line equation. I see students switch that. Mathematically, it's correct, but logistically, it just seems a little bit off. Um, it's like converting centimeters. You know, if I give you a certain number of centimeters, you want to convert to meters. You don't start with the 100 centimeters per meter. You start with the centimeters and then apply the 100 centimeters per meter. It makes logistical sense. So same things here. Start with the solution volume and then apply the conversion factor, the molarity, to get to moles of solute. See if you can do that. Let's set up a game plan. Ready? Let's do our game plan. If you're ever stuck and you don't know what to do, just do a game plan in your head real quick. So we are solving for the mass of silver. And since it was not specified, we'll just do grams, unless it looks really weird. If we get like 0. 0.000 something something grams, we might as well just convert it to milligrams for fun. Or, right, or centigrams or micrograms, whatever works out. But you can technically leave it as grams if you want to. We're starting with milliliters of the solution. So here's the starting point. There's our ending point. The key conversion here is the solution to the solute, which would be the AgNO3 that's reacting. And then we can go from two moles of this to two moles of that boring little conversion. So two big ones, solution to solute, and then the moles of the solute reactant to moles of the product. Now, remember, molarity is moles per liter. So I got to get two liters of solution, right? Thousand milliliters per liter. So once I convert to liters, then I can get to moles of my solute. Right. I'm going to use that molarity to go from liters of solution to moles of the AgNO3. And then once I have that, I can go to moles of silver with the 2 to 2 ratio like we did uh, earlier. And then once I'm in moles of that, I can go to that. So here's the key stoichiometry we've been doing this whole chapter. We're just adding a new arrow in your quiver to get to moles of your reactant. 
starting with a solution volume. All right. And then when we get later to gases, we'll be using the ideal gas law to do that. Just different ways to get to moles. Ultimately, you're just getting the moles of your reactant, go to moles of your product, and then you can convert to whatever units are necessary. This is the only new step right there. See if you can do that. All right. So pause it and see if you can attack it. I'll pause it myself, write this up on the board, and see if we get the same thing. Are you ready? Let's do it. Well, I guess I don't need to pause it, right? I <laughs> do need to pause it. I don't need to pause it. So let's start with the 32.4 milliliters of solution. That's our starting point. Well, let's convert to liters, all right? So 1,000 milliliters of solution per liter. Check. Got my first step done. Oh, that was a tough one. We're hurting. Are you going to drop? Are you going to drop? Now we can use the molarity here. So for every, you don't have to write the one if you don't want to. You can write one liter solution or not. That one is defined. Kind of like a molar mass is defined for one mole. So this tells me I have 0 0.2418 moles of silver nitrate per liter of solution. Now you see the units cancel out. Milliliters of solution cancel liters of solution. So that's the only thing new with concentration. That's how we're going to use it. Get from solution to solute. Now I could reverse this, go solute to solution, that changes things. All right, check. Now we're right back what we did the last several videos. Now we can go the two moles of silver nitrate to two moles of silver. So two moles of silver nitrate, that's my solute. So I want you to write solution in there, milliliters of solution. Right? Because remember, you have solute, solution, and solvent. Which one are you talking about? Well, we got three different things. So we got two moles of silver on top. I have not calculated this one, so we'll see how we go. And check. There's our stoichiometry step. I just went from moles of reactant to moles of product. Each step's particularly straightforward. And then last but not least, for every mole of silver... Let's look it up on our trusty, dusty, periodic table. Let's find silver, silver, and gold. Whoa, that's a lot of decimal places there. We see the 107 point, I can't read it, 8682. I don't have my glasses on. 107.8682. So double check that. I'm getting old. Yep, 107.8682. <laughs> 107.8682. Point eight six eight two grams of silver, and I've run out of room. Cross out moles, and we're stuck with grams of silver. We're good to go. I'm going to leave it in grams of silver because I have no more room on my board. Let's look at our significant digits. We've got three in our volume. The metric conversion is exact. We've got four in our concentrations. Concentrations are measured values. They're not exact. Right, so that's going to limit us to four. Um, uh, stoichiometric factors are exact, and that molar mass has seven. So we're going to be limited to three significant figures there. So pop that out, round it. I'm going to pause it, calculate it myself, and see if we get the same answer. Let's compare answers, oh students of mine, young mosquito. So take 32.4 times one divided by 1,000 times 0 0.2418 divided by one times 2 divided by 2, do that in my head, times 107.8682 divided by 1. You're just moving across dunk, 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 on your calculator. Uh, to three significant digits, I get 0 0.84507 grams of silver, good to three sig figs. So that stays as 0 0.845 grams. So we could have done that, 845 milligrams if we wanted to, but let's leave it in grams. It's a decent uh, number. So let's do an example where we calculate the an individual ion in solution. You may run into that. And that'll be more useful in the next chapter. And if we have time on the video, we'll do another one of these, but backwards, where I'll say, hey, in order to get a certain mass of this, what volume of the solution do you need? That's pretty common out in the real world as well. Be right back. Let's look at the other factor for molarity. And we can really do this with any concentration. Individual ions. So all we're going to do is use the chemical formula as a conversion factor. Can you get in the, the pattern that I look at everything as conversion factors? So if I have a chemical formula, say NaCl, 
Well, if I have one mole of NaCl, that contains one mole of sodium ions and one mole of chloride ions. I can use that as a conversion factor to go from moles of the entire ionic compound to moles of any individual ion. I could do that for any species that I deal with, but if we're dealing with something in solution that's soluble and dissolves and separates into cations and anions, we could do this. So use that as a conversion factor to get the concentration of either the cation or the anion or both. Once you see how it's done, it's so easy. You can just do it in your head. For example, let's say we have a 0.851 molar potassium phosphate solution. And we're going to find out in the next chapter that that dissolves up and separates into potassium ions and phosphate ions. But notice the three potassium ions, because they're a plus one charge, and the one phosphate ion. That's a minus three charge. So I get three potassium ions for every phosphate ion in solution. But you can see that, that three right there, that subscript. What is the molarity of the potassium ion? Now, very commonly, you will see that represented in brackets. That's one reason I wanted to bring this up, because it's such a common language that chemists use. If they go, hey, what's the concentration, almost always in molarity, of a specific species, whatever, whether it's an ion or a compound, they put what the species is, put brackets around it, and those brackets tell you molarity. Right. So let's go ahead and set this up. This should be, it's a one-step problem. It's pretty easy. Let's start with the concentration of the original solution. So here we go. So we want the concentration of just the potassium ion. Right. We're going to take the concentration of the potassium phosphate, but write it out. Don't leave it as capital N. Put it as moles per liter. So that'll be moles of K3PO4 per liter of solution. This is not how we would do a stoichiometry, stoichiometry one, where we start with the volume of the solution and then apply the molarity. All we have is the molarity here. Now, would you agree that that's just a solution sitting there, right? So the liters of solution has no impact on it. But would you agree... If I have one mole of K3PO4, potassium phosphate, in that one mole of potassium phosphate, there are three moles of potassium ions. That's what I mean about using the chemical formula as a conversion factor. And now the units of moles of potassium phosphate cancel out, and I'm left with moles of K plus per liter solution. That's the molarity of the ion. It's that easy, guys. It's so simple. So let's take 0.851, good to three sitting of eight digits. This is exact, right? The, the, the ratio of the ions or atoms in a chemical formula is an exact number. So let's times that by three, 0.851 times three, I get 2.553. 2.553 molar, but we're good to three significant digits. So let's put a vertical dash line right there. 2.55 will go three zero molar. Don't really need that zero on the end. So 2.553, and that is closer to 2.55 than 2.56. So that'll be 2.56 molar. So a 0.851 molar potassium phosphate solution would produce a 2.5530 molar solution of K plus if you're interested in just that one ion because it spits off when one mole of that dissolves it spits off three times as much K plus. Okay. We'll do one more molarity problem. I'm going to do solution making in a totally separate video because we can do that with any concentration unit. So let's just focus on molarity in this one. But let's do one like we did last time, but we'll work it backwards. So I'll put another balanced equation on the board with some AQ species and we'll work from reactant to product. So the molarity is going to be upside down in the unit line equation. Here's a fun problem for you. You might see on an exam. Yay! All right, we got a, another reaction, and you see the AQs. When you ever see AQ, you know I can throw concentration at you. So we've got uh, two moles of thallium metal with six moles of uh, hydrobromic acid. That's your solution, forming three moles of hydrogen gas and two moles of thallium three bromide. And you see all those bubbles. Metals and acids are fun. Collect the hydrogen gas and poof in a flame. What volume of 1.62 molar hydrobromic acid solution? is required to produce 52 centigrams of hydrogen gas. So we're interested 
and working backwards. So this is just the reverse of what we did before. So the molarity term will be reversed. So we're going to start with the hydrogen and work ourselves. So get to moles of hydrogen, work backwards to moles of your solute, and then convert solute to solution using the molarity. So here's our game plan. So we're going to start here. We're starting with the hydrogen gas, which is centigrams. So we're starting with centigrams of hydrogen. Yeah, I'm always throwing those metric things in there. And we want to end up with volume of solution. Now, it doesn't specify, so let's do milliliters. And this is the HBr solution, all right? So I didn't specify, so technically you could leave it in liters, but let's, let's put it in milliliters because that's what we use in the lab. We got to get from hydrogen to HBr. That's our key conversion, one species to another. And then our second one is the solute to solution. Obviously, we got to get to moles. To do that, I got to get to grams. So let's go to grams of hydrogen. And then I can go to moles of hydrogen. All right, Toe, Daddy O. Just like we've been doing before. And once I got moles of hydrogen, I can go three moles of hydrogen to six moles of the HBr solute in the solution. There's our stoichiometry. Nothing new here. And now what's new is using the concentration to go from moles of HBr to liters of solution. And then once we're in liters of solution, we can go to milliliters of solution. So one, two, three, four, five steps. I don't know if I can fit this on my board. Yikes! This is going to be interesting. This is going to be a major squish factor. So I think I might erase this and do this on another. So pause it, do it yourself. I'm gonna erase it and put it on, well, blah, let's get in here. I'll just write small. Get your magnifying glass, zoom, zoom. Get your hands and zoom it. Go like this on your screen and go, Whoop, and you can see it. All right, let's punch this out. So we've got 52 centigrams of hydrogen, right on. Let's go to grams, so 100 centigrams per gram, and that's of the hydrogen. Normally I put the H2 on there, but we're gonna not have a lot of space here. All right, let's convert to moles. So let's take the molar mass of, atomic mass of hydrogen times two, 1.00794, multiply that by two, good two, one, two, three, four, five decimal places, my friends. So it's hydrogen plus hydrogen, diatomic. So I get 2.01588, grams of hydrogen per mole. So check, check. Always do the game plan if you're stuck, my friends. You can't ever go wrong because each step is simple. I'm in moles of hydrogen. Now I can go three moles of hydrogen are produced when six moles of the HBr reacts, the solute. So we've got a three here. So three moles of hydrogen are produced from six moles of HBr. And that's my solute, which reacts, right? Now I'm gonna use my concentration to convert from moles of solute to liters of solution. It's gonna be upside down though, flipped from what we did before. So for, there are what, 1.62 moles of solute per liter of solution. So check, check. And that's the only thing new in this video is that molarity is. Now we're gonna do exactly the same thing with the other units of concentration, mass percent, volume percent, weight volume percent, normality. It's the exact same process. It's just the units might be a little bit different for solution and or solute. And since, let's go to milliliters. It doesn't say milliliters, but let's go to milliliters. So 1,000 milliliters of solution per liter of solution. And if you want to cross out all your units, you'll be left just with milliliters of solution. Let's look at our significant digits. I've got two in the mass of hydrogen. This is exact from the metric conversions. One, two, three, four, that's six in the molar mass of hydrogen. This is an exact conversion. Three significant digits in my concentration and the metric conversion is exact. So I'm limited to two significant figures. 
Two, 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 two. So what do you get? Pop that on your calculator. 318. But we're good to two significant digits. That's really going to limit us, right? So 318.4. And that's, is that, now we're good to the tens place here. Two sig figs, is that closer to 310 or 320? Well, 318 is closer to 320. So that's going to round up, because that's greater than 5, to 320 milliliters of solution. That was kind of a tricky rounding one. Remember, you got to keep that non-significant zero on there. So we got two significant digits, but we retain the magnitude. That's why we have non-significant trailing zeros, my friend. Boom! There's your introduction to molarity. You can now work the stoichiometry reactant to product, product to reactant, molarity one side, molarity flipped upside down. You've got it all. You can do molarity of individual ions. We'll do solution making in a separate video. Keep it cranking a little bit every day.